The infection within Zucosis is something straight out of a nightmare. It's fascinating how a mysterious parasite can transform these animals into monstrosities. But what exactly is happening to them when the infection occurs? Where did this mother creature come from and why is she being kept at a zoo? Well, let's take a closer look. If you're watching this video, it means you've probably played the game, which also means you know about the mother. We are first informed about her on a phone call with Oliver. He tells us about this mysterious creature they call Mother, how she is locked away, but not much is known about her, so the scientists study her. This mother has been spreading parasites all over the zoo. They infiltrate the animals, mutating them into ravenous monsters. In this moment, Oliver also explains how he infected Paul. So to to understand what's really going on here, we need to know the origin of it all. At a certain point in the story, we are able to access the zoo's underground secret lab, and this provides so much information about the zoo's secrets. Here we learn about Oliver's past, how he is actually a decorated doctor, having his masters of science in biology and two other degrees in technology and biology. So he's pretty smart to say the least. Now this also implies that he is the zoo's owner, aka everyone's boss. Why is this important? Well, he could be part of the reason why mother is here, which brings us to the whiteboard. This reveals the origin of the mother as well as how the parasite affects its hosts. In 1967, a team of scientists set up three bases around what looks to be Greenland, although it's unknown as to what exactly they were doing there in the first place. Perhaps they caught wind of the location's ice thawing and decided to see what they could find. That being said, the scientists ended up finding something strange frozen within an ice core, so they retrieved it. Once it began thawing, they witnessed something that they had never seen before, a large medusa-like creature with countless tentacles emerging from her head. Its only facial feature is a sideways mouth with human-like teeth. It seems to be able to grow many arm-like appendages from its back, with eight fingers on each hand. This monstrosity slithers around while also using ten spider-like legs. The scientists thought that its evolutionary code was intertwined with other organisms, like a Venus flytrap, which explains its mouth, a spider, which explains its legs, a snake because it slithers, and an old god. Likely one of ancient times, as something like this could only be explained through the powers of a god. This creature's most notable ability is being able to send out parasites that will infect a host, mutating them with select features from herself. Now, Mother and her parasites are all connected through a hive mind, meaning if she dies, they all die, even if they're already inside of a host. So this is why the scientists named her Mother. It's because of her ability to send out offspring. The scientists suggest her origin could date back over 8,000 years. However, she could be much older with the help of congruent chemistry. This is the process where a substance is able to change its form like melting or dissolving without altering Entering its chemical composition, meaning a liquid can have the same composition as a solid state. This is suggested because Mother is able to alter her own body. Like I said, she has the ability to grow arms when needed. We also learn throughout the story that she is able to regenerate. So with all that being said, this could mean she dates back all the way to Pangaea, where all land on earth was connected, creating a supercontinent 200 to 300 million years ago. However, there is one folder on a desk with the title Lost X Planet, which could suggest that this mother creature is not actually from Earth and originated on a completely different planet. Now, one of Mother's biggest threats is her ability to send out these parasites, her offspring, to look for a host to infect. So how does this work? A parasite will enter the host, likely from their mouth, but the mutation does not happen instantly as the rate differs based on the host. So while inside, the host slowly begins showing symptoms of an illness. We see this with Paul as he gets more and more sick over the course of the story. Even with the animals, they show signs of illness before they mutate. The parasite it will actually mimic a disease, leading the host to think that they are sick with something else. This is a tactic to fool the host. 
host. So once the host is ready, they mutate into a new creation, mixing their genes with mothers. This is why each animal has a similar feature to mother. For example, the tentacles on her head are similar to the mutated elephants. But I'll come back to the animals in a moment. Once the host is fully transformed, it can only eat one thing meat. This mutation also gives the host new heightened abilities, like being able to climb walls, move at incredible speeds, and even the ability to fly. It almost creates a new species of animal, which ties into the term hopeful monsters. Keep this in mind because it will be important later on. Now, the infected do not attack other infected. Like I said, they have a hive mind. This is why Paul gets attacked, but never actually eaten. They're able to sense that he's also sick with a parasite. Although there is experimental medication to save the infected hosts and turn them back to normal. These medications were made by CJ, another scientist that once worked at the zoo before his death. Meaning, while studying them, they were able to design a cure. This cure will force the parasite out of the host, allowing them to change back to normal as if nothing happened. This tells us that the parasite is still active or alive alive when the host is mutated. It doesn't become part of the host, but rather uses them as a vessel. I'm no scientist, but the idea that the host can physically mutate, then return back to normal, could be explained again by congruent chemistry. How something is able to change its form without permanently altering its composition, at least in the world of this game. This leads us to how it affects humans. The parasite is injected into Paul in a liquid form. This is something likely created by the scientists after studying it for so long. Using congruent chemistry, they were able to force a parasite into a liquid state that would then form into a physical state once inside the host. Over time, the human will begin to show signs of an illness. They'll feel off and begin to vomit as the infection spreads throughout their body. Their blood vessels start to damage and appear visible from outside the skin. Right before mutation, the human will become paralyzed, as the parasite takes full control of the body. Bone molecular shifting will occur, and the human will mutate into something straight out of a nightmare. The mouth will become enlarged, as the teeth grow long and sharp. The human will also grow spider-like legs out of its back and its hands completely transform. The hands, legs, and mouth are similar to that of mother. Last but not least, after mutating, they only crave meat. Like I said before, each host mutation are not one in the same. The animal's mutations are drastically different from each other, but the process is the same as what happens to a human. The parasite enters, over time the host gets sick, and eventually mutates. The zebra's facial structure completely changes. It forms a mouth with teeth from its backside, and grows legs or tentacles from its back. The giraffe's head and neck splits open to create a large mouth with many sharp teeth. It also crawls around with new spider like legs. The elephant is able to generate armor and its trunk mutates into tentacles. Now I'm not going to go over every single animal's mutation because I would just be listing off physical differences. All I wanted to do here was point out a few examples of how the parasite alters them and includes traits of the mother. This is important because everything leads back to her. She is the cause of all this. Physically, the mutations are different, but they're the same idea. The parasite enters, the host gets sick, then mutates into an advanced species and craves meat. Keyword, advanced species, which leads us into why mother is at the zoo in the first place. So now we know where this mother creature came from and what the infection does, but why is she at this zoo and why are there scientists studying her? Oliver somehow found out about the mother creature and was intrigued by it. He realized its parasites were able to mutate other organisms, so he wanted to study it. After all, what scientist wouldn't? So what better place to do this than a zoo? Him and other scientists like CJ would close down the zoo but keep the animals there to conduct experiments on them. Some were successful and some were not. We can see this from a giraffe picture labeled results 017. But what's the point of creating mutated animals? Why do it? 
Well, I said it before, and it's because of this little note right here. Goldschmidt's Hopeful Monsters. This term, Hopeful Monsters, was created by German geneticist Richard Goldschmidt. The term is described as a mutant organism that could potentially establish a new evolutionary lineage. In other words, it's the idea that an organism would mutate into something beneficially new. The mutation would give the organism a new feature that made it better. This explains what's going on here. The scientists were letting mother's parasites mutate the animals in hopes that they would develop into new species. A species that makes a superior version. For example, penguins do not have the ability to fly, even though they're birds. This is because their wing structure evolved for swimming. They are not strong enough to hold the bird's weight in the air. So, with the help of this parasite, it would enhance the penguin, making its wings stronger, allowing it to fly thus making the penguin better, more enhanced if you will. After making a successful mutation like this, that flying penguin would mate to spawn offspring that actually has the ability to fly, a brand new species of penguins, a new lineage. That is what is happening at Pine Valley Zoo. These scientists were trying to create new species of enhanced animals with the help of mother. I just want to reiterate that I am not a scientist, and a lot of this stuff is very scientific, so it goes without saying that I could be wrong about a few things, but that's the general idea of mother, the parasites, and the infection. Although I do stand by the idea that they are creating new enhanced animals with the parasite. What do you guys make of all this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you like horror game content like this, please consider subscribing. I just made a new discord server, so if you want to connect with me, I recommend joining the community. Also, if you want to support the channel more, you can become a member. Don't forget to follow my Twitter at TerrifyT. Thanks for watching.